Welcome to the November 1st uh, Special Board of Select and Sewer Commission is uh, meeting. All members are present. Uh, the first item on the agenda and only is interview candidate for our building commissioner's position. So, sir, you can come up and just identify yourself. If you could just tell us a little about yourself, sure. and then we may have questions for you. All right. uh, thank you. My name is Joe Ichu. I'm uh, currently the uh, building commissioner in the town of Berlin. Um, <clears throat> I've been in construction for over 20 years. Uh, I've been an inspector for at least six or seven now. Um, moved my way up through the rank of being a building official. Started my career um, as a alternate for the town of Northbridge, which is where I live. Um, while going to college, um, I went back later in life. Um, I got a job working in the city of Worcester, which is uh, where I got my stepping stone as a local inspector. And there was a huge learning curve when I started working there. Um, everything between commercial and residential, you know, school, everything. Uh, it was an amazing learning um, curve that you get over while you're there. But some very valuable lessons learned while I was there. Um, once I was there, I was working part-time for the town of Northrow during that same time. Um, at one point, the, um, I had gotten my commissioner certification. The town of Northrow offered me a full-time position after their commissioner left. Um, and I, I took that as my first position as commissioner. Worked in the town of Northrow in total two and a half years. Um, better opportunity showed up in the town of Berlin. So I took that position and I've been there ever since. Um, I am working currently part-time in the town of Acton, um, and I'm looking to um, replace that, hopefully, with this position and work in both communities, both Berlin and West Boylston. So, um, on a personal note, I'm a father. Uh, I have two boys, ages 14 and 15, both in high school. Uh, so I'm a family man, come from a good-sized family myself, so um, deep-rooted in, in the area. Grew up in Grafton. Okay, now, and um, I think I, uh, Mr. H.U. gave us all a copy of his resume, uh, some information about the position here in West Boylston, and some information about the facility management outline that he offers. So, um, how about one of the, I think one of the questions, and then we'll go on to questions, is uh, how do you feel you can work both towns? Because how many hours do you work in? 40 hours in Berlin. 40 hours, and then we're looking at? 32. Yeah. Yeah, so um, one thing that is nice uh, with my schedule in Berlin is that it's a flexible schedule. So I was asked to work 40 hours. Um, anything I work over 40 hours is comp time. And as long as I am getting my inspections done and meeting the customer service needs of the town and community and so forth, um, I have, <coughs> I have a, a chance to adjust my schedule as, as needed. Uh, currently, right now, with the... the uh, employment situation that I'm in. I'm working in Berlin um, and in Acton. So I go in the morning from about 5 a.m. I work from 5 to 7.30 in Berlin. Then I head to um, Acton. I work in Acton from 8 a.m. to noon. Then back in Berlin from 12.30 and I'm in Berlin till um, into the evening. So I, I work until about 7.30, 8 o'clock every night from 5 to 7.30. Um, so that's not an unusual um, work schedule for me. Uh, I'm used to working the, the long hours. Um, so I, I don't have any problems working the two jobs, working the, the extra hours. As you can see at the hours that I've um, submitted to you, the way I could <clears throat> help benefit the town of West Boylston is I could offer hours uh, two, maybe up to three days a week from seven to nine, Monday, Wednesday, possibly Friday, um, to go and, and meet with contractors and do some plan review in the morning, meet with internal staff, make sure that the office is running appropriately and that things are good to go for the day. Um, also being able to keep in constant communication by cell phone, email, text messaging, all that throughout the day. Um, I am eligible um, to be here at any point in time, 24-7, if there is a uh, time-sensitive project or if uh, there's an emergency that arises. I'm only about 15 minutes from Berlin to here um, in the time that I checked even tonight on my way over. Um, so easily enough, I can get in here, get the inspections done if need be on, a, on an emergency type basis. Um, then the rest of the hours, of course, would be after my hours in Berlin, 
which would be from 1.30 to uh, 7.30 or 7 o'clock at night. Um, being here in the afternoons and into the evenings, I noticed it allows time during the early parts of the afternoon to continue with inspections, meeting with individuals that are contractors and whatnot, plan review. And then offering hours later into the evening allows for um, the homeowner that doesn't get a chance to get out during the day and get in during normal business hours to come in and make an appointment and see me. Um, I've noticed that because that's what's worked out well in Berlin right now. People enjoy having the opportunity to catch me at a, at a little bit later in the day so they're not taking time off of their work to, to come in and meet with me. Um, of course, emails, calls, things of that nature um, are followed up on right away within that same day, if not within 24 hours. Um, so that's the kind of schedule I'd be looking at providing with uh, West Boylston and maintaining Berlin. So my Berlin hours would be standard to 5 to 1, and then, of course, 1.30 to 7 or 7.30 here, in just those few days a week where I would be in here from 7 to 9, um, Monday, Wednesday, and possible Friday. Okay. And then um, how about, like, night meetings and things like that? So I already looked up the night schedules for the ZBA hearings that you have. Um, my understanding is that would be the primary one I would be going to. That does not conflict with any of my evening obligations in Berlin. Okay. Um, currently, right now in Berlin, I attend some selectman meetings. Um, I go to planning board, ZBA, um, every once in a while, a conservation or board of health. Um, right now, Berlin is a little unique. They, we don't have a town planner or a town engineer or um, a board of health agent. Every, um, it's either committees, board members um, that are from town that operate those, and the board of health we use in the Shoba as our regional. Um, so they're only in the office a little bit. Um, so right now I'm acting kind of as a liaison to coordinate between these boards. Um, doesn't necessarily, I, I meet those boards on their meeting nights. Sometimes they'll pose questions to me and I just help relate the questions. Um, because it's difficult for these boards and committees where they don't have emails to talk to one another. So I, I kind of help mitigate the, that situation. Um, the only thing, other thing that I am on is I'm the liaison for the energy committee that we have established in Berlin. Um, again, looking at the nights that those meetings fall in, um, they're all past the 7 p.m. time. So, um, and I'm used to those too. You know, sometimes those go from 7.30 to 11 o'clock at night and I'm right back in at 5 a.m. So, um, again, it's been a schedule that I'm used to, that I've been doing for quite some time, um, and I, it, it doesn't really bother me. It works well. Okay. Uh, just uh, any questions from the board? Mm -hmm. John? So, commercial, Berlin does quite a bit of commercial. Yes. And um, so a set of plans, commercial plans, is obviously a lot longer than a residential. Where, where, where does that time come in when you're not Say if we had to hear, mm -hmm. and you needed uh, how long is I don't know, a set of plans for I don't know what they build in Berlin lately. That so we have a hotel that's just finishing up. Okay, um, I have a large project that just came in. Um, I maintain the 30-day for large projects. I maintain the 30-day you know limit as far as the state statute says. I have 30 days to review. Um, I, so again, I have a large project that just came into town. It's 21 buildings. It's uh, 204 apartments with a clubhouse, um, pump house, garages, and so forth. Uh, seven um, three-story apartment buildings, different configurations. So going through that, and I've been working on that three and a half weeks, and I have almost every building set to go. So I, I, I move right along. That's impressive. Rush. Oh, I'm sorry, John, do you have Can another you? question? I'll think yeah. of that. Okay. Can you tell me something about your uh, facilities manager or facilities related experience? Sure. So right now um, Berlin is um, combining my job duties and I'm sharing them with the Department of um, Public Works director. So we, we split. DPW does the maintenance of the buildings. I do the facilities management portion of the buildings. Um, we just uh, implemented an analytical um, software program that talks to our HVAC equipment for regulating certain buildings and um, working with the heating and cooling and so forth. Um, we've come to notice with a lot of things that are going on, the facilities themselves are starting to break down. You know, the facility is 20 years old, so isn't the equipment that goes with it. 
Um, things are starting to need to be replaced, so we have to put in a capital improvement plan for each individual building to meet the needs of that building and the future needs, needs of that building. Um, so when it comes down to facilities management, you don't look at, or I don't look at the just the short term por portion of, you know, how do we fix this immediately? It's okay, we need to fix this right now, and can we do that in house or do I need a contractor? And then what do we set up for a capital plan? What needs to be done first? So you look at all of your buildings across the town and you say, okay, which is our critical infrastructure? Which buildings need to be you know, looked at immediately? And how do we get a game plan in place to you know, replace equipment, HVAC equipment? Maybe it needs a new roof. Maybe you have some uh, ADA things that need to be met because it's a public building and it ha you know, it's had some upgrades, but it hasn't finished that. So you really have to look at a broad scope of the entire building, find out what's the most critical and then set a plan in place to, to take care of those issues. How much experience do you have? Um, how, how many years of experience uh, uh, as a facilities? So facilities management has been three years right now. In Berlin? No, Berlin is two years, and then uh, in Northborough is a year. But Northboro, you put it as a uh, building inspector, right? I thought you were... Northboro, you are a building inspector, right? I am a building commissioner. My, my job roles were combined. Oh. John, did you think of it? I'll think of it. Okay. Uh, My turn? Yeah, I'm, I'm good listening. <laughs> okay. 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 So tell me why you want to leave Acton. So Acton's a little bit of a further ride um, from um, Berlin north, you know, going up Route 2 and so forth. Um, I'd like to cut my commute down, something that um, I can do a little bit more. Um, Acton is limited to 16 hours a week. Um, and um, eventually Acton will be going away as of July 1 to turning that into a full-time position. And with that becoming a full-time position, they have asked me to stay on as a full-time local inspector. However, um, that is not something I would like to do. I enjoy working in a small community such as Berlin, and I think that's why West Wilson would also be a good fit for me. Um, with working in Acton and them wanting me full-time, the, the hours are um, 8 to 5 p.m., all route to. Um, right now I like my commute and I like the way things are set up. So if I can maintain staying in the area, um, then that's what I would love to do. So, What do you know about the town of West Boylston? So I've been doing some research. Um, I know that you just finished a new police building, uh, that you're working on a senior center right now. I did go through your history and that you were incorporated in 1808. Um, and I went through all the back history about the Wachusett uh, Reservoir and so forth. I do know that um, you are um, a stretch code community, and I know that um, at your past meeting that you just had, that they um, approved the marijuana facilities um, to come in for recreational. Um, so I've been making sure that I, am, I'm not making a decision based off of, um, I just want to go somewhere else. I'm making a decision on, on a community that I think I will fit in and that will fit me. Um, and in looking at that, I, I make sure I do my homework and my before I make decisions. So. Okay, um, I'm sure in your line you've had some conflict with some businesses. Can you mm -hmm. give us an example of some of the conflicts and how you handled it and what the resolution was? Sure. Um, I always try to handle um, conflicts first and foremost by diffusing the situation. Um, every once in a while, and especially if you're dealing with a business or sometimes even a homeowner, um, people are very you know don't mess with my stuff. This is my business. Don't mess with my business. I'm making my money, you know, things like that. They, and, and rightfully so, I understand that. You know, people um, can get upset. Sometimes when they get upset, sometimes or most often their um, demeanor will change and sometimes get hostile. Um, I always try to step back from that, um, try to renegotiate the, the way the conversation is going and see if we can come to an understanding. If the individual is completely unreasonable, um, I usually will leave the conversation and ask if we can, you know, maybe uh, reestablish the conversation somewhere else. Um, but, for example, I had a issue with a gentleman that was operating a contractor business out of his own home in Berlin. Uh, it's allowed to be done in the, in the zone that he's living in, However, it's required to have a special permit, and that special permit is to be renewed every five years. Well, he had one, and it, and it lapsed. 
um, and he continued to work. So complaint came in to me to investigate that under a zoning complaint. So I went, investigated, sure enough, yes, the individual's doing work out of his home and is required to have a special permit. So um, first I tried to approach um, and have a conversation. Um, the individual did not want to have a conversation with me, asked me to stay away from him and he had a few choice words. So I, I left the situation. Um, I went back, um, wrote a letter for a zoning violation. Um, I always mail it out twofold. One goes regular mail, one goes a certified mail. So if one comes back and they don't sign, at least the other one I will take in that they've gotten it. And then um, once that goes in, usually the individual will come in and talk to me. This particular homeowner came in and was screaming, yelling at me at my counter. Um, I took a step back, calm voice, just spoke, um, told him, I understand that you're very upset right now. I would be upset if I was in your situation. There is a way through this. Let me help you get to the point where you can operate your business and this is what you have to do. After about five, ten minutes of talking to this individual, he had calmed down, relaxed. I walked him through the process of getting a special permit from the ZBA. We went through the process, he got his permit, and now he's back to work. Um, so that was the resolution we got. Um, took a little while to get there, but it's with anything, it, you just keep at it until you, you get there. So you, you said that um, Berlin gives you a flexible, flexible schedule. Mm -hmm. If something comes up and a contractor can only meet you at 6 o'clock and you're scheduled in Berlin, what kind of reassurance do you have that they... It's 6 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. So I just adjust my hours as needed. So if I have to meet somebody at 6 o'clock at their job site because, say, they have concrete coming in for a foundation, right. I will meet them there for 6 o'clock. We'll go through what they need to go through for their inspection, and then I will just head back to Berlin thereafter. Um, any hours that I need to make up in Berlin, I will adhere to the hours here. Um, but when I make up my hours in Berlin, um, I make them up on the tail end of my day. So it would be finishing up here and going back there. You're saying you get into Berlin at 5 a.m.? Yes. What kind of work are you doing at 5 a.m. that, because sure. I would think a lot of contractors might start at 6, but I'm not too sure about 5, and, yeah. you know, there are rules that you can't start your machines till 7 or so, so what right. are you doing? So our ZBA has, our zoning bylaws say that to 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, what I notice in, in my quiet time is between 5 and 7. So I come in at 5 o'clock, that's when I can do my plan review, I can get emails out, um, I can write letters, I can do some filing, I can get things squared away and, and situated for the day to come. Come 7 o'clock or even 6.30, my phone starts ringing. People start coming in. Um, you know, I start getting requests for, for uh, inspections for later in the afternoon. Um, and then I start planning my day accordingly. Uh, in, in Berlin, we have a lot of work going on in town, and we have about $180 million worth of build-out coming in the next five years. So um, I get a lot of phone calls, I have a lot of meetings. Um, right now I have plans upon plans that I'm reviewing to go through multiple projects. So, and I, I am the only show in town. So I have to balance my time as best as I can to make sure that I can get my job done. Okay. When you went to Acton, did you know it was gonna be a short term? Because you've only been there since May. No, I did not. I thought it was gonna be a much longer longer process and was that the first time that you actually had like more of a full-time and a part-time job no I'm kind um, of looking at the it looks like you do a lot of two years yeah actually I was positions right so I was working in Worcester and part-time in North Pro okay so that's how that was I actually had started in North Pro in um, January of 15 it just so happened though I went from the local which is a lower level to a promotion of oh. a building commissioner to go to North Pro. Okay. So I, I took that position, uh, learned a valuable uh, amount of information there between budgeting and, and learning how to run a department real well. Um, had some people that kind of took me under their wing that were seasoned um, department heads. I learned a lot and have been able to, to capitalize on that. So why did you leave North Pro to go to Berlin? Uh, Berlin just happened to offer a, a better opportunity. Okay. I'll take a break. We'll let somebody else ask. Go ahead, John. I mean, I only, uh, so far, everything that I've heard, I, I like, uh, with the exception of you're going from working 50, you're looking to go from working 56 hours a week 
plus meetings mm -hmm. to 72 hours a week plus meetings. Mm -hmm. You said you're used to the schedule, but to add an additional 16 hours a week, mm -hmm. that gives me some pause that your, your work rest cycle is going to break down and you're not going to be able to continue to work. And it's not going to be 72 hours a week because you're going to have meetings at both towns. So it's going to be more like 85 hours a week. Right. When are you going to sleep? Right. No, I do. I do. Uh, <laughs> I, I do sleep usually between uh, 10 p.m. at night and about 3.50 in the morning when I wake up. So um, my schedule, the way it's set up now, granted I've only, I only work four hours in Acton, but if you put in the drive time and the time that I'm in between both um, Berlin and Acton currently in the drive times and so forth, meetings and everything like that, I'm doing those hours now. I I don't think you're doing an additional 16 above what you're being paid for. I mean, you said you'd work. No, I, I get I get paid 40 hours whether I work 40 hours or not. So if I work 100 hours, I get paid for 40. If I work 35, I get paid for 40. I'm strictly salary in Berlin, not hourly. Okay, so for Berlin, what you're saying is you're presently putting in more than 40 hours. Yes. And you're going to be able to continue to offer the same services to Berlin. Mm -hmm at what is going to have to be a reduced amount of hours based on the number of hours in a day. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've worked out the logistics over and over. I would have never applied for the position if I did not think that I could meet the needs of both communities. Okay. Are you the only instructor in Berlin? Yes. You don't have no assistance or anything? No. Why don't you go on vacation? Uh, I have an alternate that comes in. And do you have a secretary? I do. She's part time. Monday through Thursday, eight to noon. And oh, go ahead. Oh, the uh, facilities manager. Roughly, do you think eight hours a week, ten hours a week is enough? Yeah, I would say so. Um, it depends. Really, it comes down to um, the amount of buildings that you have in town and the age of those buildings. You have two buildings that are pretty much brand new right now. And this building is it's not that, it's probably 15 years, something like that. So that's not too bad. When you start looking at buildings that are you know, 25 years old and, and older, that's when you start looking into the, um, the equipment and, and things that break down in the building. You know, your roofing structures, your HVAC equipment, you know, is it meeting the needs, is it broken down, is it past its useful lifespan, things like that. And that's when you have to start doing your capital planning. And you would facilitate the, um, not do the actual work, but just say, you know, the door needs to be replaced over here or something like that, and you'd find somebody to do it or That's correct. something on that idea, yeah. you know, um, and get a schedule to change all the filters. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I, I, would, I would go out and, and procure companies that would come out and they would be our vendor, and um, with them being our vendor, I should be able to call them up and say, I have five doors that I need to have replaced here, the closer's not working give them a whole list, maybe walk them through the facility, show them the problem areas, and then leave it to them to do the work that they've been hired to do. Is that what you do in Berlin now? Yes. So you do the same kind of setup, so you wait till you have a couple of things for somebody to do, then have somebody come in and yep. do them at once. Yeah. And if there's multiple buildings that have similar issues, you know, lump them together. If, if, it's, if it's in the budget and it's in the funds to, to do the maintenance like that and maintain the buildings, then, you know, start going through systematically, okay, today you're going to do this building, next week you're going to do this building, and so on. So, in regards to, I think one of the concerns I have are the, are the night meetings. Because mm -hmm. you have Berlin, you're saying you meet with two nights a week, on, on, always? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, no, it's uh, twice a month. For all those different groups that you said you go to? Yeah, so um, right now the ZBA and the Energy Committee uh, I'm the ex officio in the Energy Committee. Those two are set in stone for me to meet on. The other ones are required as needed. Uh, planning Board meets twice a month, and um, Conservation and Board of Health meet on a weekly basis. However, I don't attend those that often. It's very rare that I do, but when I'm asked to, I do. Um, what night does the Planning Board meet? So, Planning Board meets on Tuesdays. Yep. And I was looking, I believe your ZBA meets on a Thursday evening here. Not planning, okay. but on Wednesdays, I believe, mostly. Mm -hmm. Wednesday. And then, well, we also have the capital. I'm sure he would go to the capital in the board, right? Just to help them out with 
buildings? I, I don't think that would have to be done at a meeting. No, that, but, that's more of it through email. But if he did, it would be, it wouldn't be no, no, it wouldn't no. be a normal. It'd be no, one time. Be, they'll yeah, invite him exactly. Okay, and then um, in regards to zoning enforcement, mm -hmm. what's I know it's in Berlin. It says you're the building commissioner. Are you also the zoning enforcement? Yes. Yep. Okay. So what? Being the zoning enforcement officer, what do you do, or what would you do here in town? So would you wait for someone to file a complaint about a zoning issue? Would you go out and take making so, sure all our zoning is? Yeah. So, so I have found from the communities that I've worked in, um, it depends on the policy of that community. So, for example, when I worked in North Brown, it was, you know, if you drive around, you see a dumpster, you see something that doesn't meet our zoning regulations, um, stop try to talk to somebody, if not, leave your car, get the information, get in touch with somebody, try to get it done. In Berlin, the way they want um, their setup is they want a written complaint to come in and then me to act upon that. Um, they don't want me going on somebody's property and doing investigations without some sort of a written complaint and something to follow up on. So whatever the town's policy would be, if it's something, you know, you want me to drive up and down the roads and, and, and look for illegal signs and remove the signs and things like that, then that's something I would do. That was something that I did in North Pro. Um, every town has a, a different zoning bylaw, and there's different ways to regulate those zoning bylaws. Um, it really comes down whatever the, the policy is. Mm -hmm. Okay, Raj, did you have some? Yeah. You said you go to the ZBA meetings. Mm -hmm. What's going on in Berlin? Why, why do you, they need you for the ZBA meeting? So with the ZBA, um, I've created a form that is a zoning interpretation form. Basically what people do is they come in, they see me, and um, most people are looking for a denial for a building permit. What I do is instead of going through all that extra work of reading through their plans, finding out what's wrong, telling them that no, you can't do this, instead of that I try to, try to help the individual rather than kind of always telling them they can't do something. So they bring their information into me. I, on the form it says um, the property address, what's the current use of the property, single family home, what's the proposed use, what do you want to do? Then they give me their contact information. Then what I do is I take that form, I go through our zoning bylaws cover to cover, and I find out whatever pertains to it. I tell you the map and parcel, zoning district it's in, and then these articles apply here for that proposed use. And if you need to go to one, it's allowed by right, no, it's prohibited, uh, ZBA planning board, I have that all down. If it's in an overlay district, I talk about that. By the end, it's all filled out. I sign, date it. They use that as part of their submittal to the ZBA or to the planning board for a decision that they're looking for. And then what happens is that makes life easier for the members on the ZBA to read through that. They already have all the articles and sections of the uh, bylaw that pertains to what these people are looking to, to achieve. And then that, that person can make a decision as a board member to say, okay, this, this fits in with what we're looking for. This is your hardship. I see that. And then they can go through and vote and, and make a pertinent decision. I'm there in case they have a question about my zoning determination and if they need additional information because usually through the process of somebody coming in to go to the ZBA or the planning board, I will meet them uh, several times. They'll come in and sit with me. They'll show me their package. They'll show me where they progressed and if there's anything that they missed. Um, what I really emphasizes is customer service. I want people to come in and be able to get service from the community in which they live or work or, or would like to live and, and be able to achieve something. I have always worked so that people are not hindered by my job. My job is not to um, rule with an iron fist, so to speak. Um, I find part of my job or the majority of my job is public education. Um, I need to educate you on our zoning bylaws. I need to educate you on building code and what the requirements are and then I need to help you meet those requirements. If we can't meet those requirements, unfortunately that's the way it is. But if we can meet those, let's see how we can work together to get your project complete. So one, only when you deny the permit, then they will go to the ZBA. That's the time you need to go to the ZBA, right? I, yes, I will go, yeah. So do you have to go to every ZBA meeting or once, only once required? No, I, I go to every ZBA meeting. Why? It's it's just yeah. worked out well that way. It helps constant communication with the board. Because sometimes they come up with a question that may have not been asked. Mm -hmm. um, there's times I just, I'm there present without having to answer any questions. 
How do you compensate that time when you go to the meetings? So that's that's comp time. So if I if I work anything over forty hours, it's considered comp time. Have you ha had any experience with the forty B projects? Yes, several. In uh, Berlin. Yep, we uh, we have one that's finishing up right now. We just had another how, one. How big it is? So we have a uh, thirty six building single family homes is going in there. Um, we have another one that just went through the process and is going to be 12 homes. Um, they're looking at another one that's 34 homes, has not been approved yet, but they're going through it. Okay, thank you. So, I don't know if, if Pat will be... So, I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the way our building commissioners have been working is they have their set hours, plus then, in addition to their set hours, they're required to come to these meetings above and beyond their set hours. Is that correct? Correct. And so the 32 hours could be 37 hours. Now, it, does that, do they get, that's part of their job that they do not get compensated for, correct? Depends on how we negotiate a contract. That's how it currently has been. Yes. So what would your expectation be if we had you come to a meeting and you're here for two hours, traditionally, the building inspector gets paid for the 32 hours, mm -hmm. and any meetings they have to attend have been part of the job, that, and it's understood that that's part of, the, even though the contract is for 32 hours, it's a salary, mm -hmm. it's 32 hours plus these other meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, is that your understanding? Yes. Of the, uh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's normal. For, for me, that's normal. When I uh, was hired in, in Northborough, it was uh, 40 hours and meetings. Uh, they didn't offer comp time. Berlin is completely opposite. Okay. They say 40 hours, you go to these meetings, but you're considered comp time for going to the extra meetings. Doesn't mean I get paid for it, but that means I can utilize that time at some other point to utilize, whether it be doctor's appointments or something mm -hmm. along that line. And just so you're clear, I mean, here it would be... Just like North Rome. Just Yes. Yep. So can you use that comp time towards your weekly uh, time? Yes, that's correct. Time off. Right. The time off. Yes. Yep. Yep. And, the, and, and that's, I that's what help, helps me balance my month's worth of work, you know, is having that extra comp time. Like, I went through my comp time today. I have 389 hours of comp time that I've accrued so far. It's just I haven't used it, you know. So if you wanted to, you could take a week, two weeks off paid, and that would be how you think. Yep. Yeah, I'll use it. Oh, uh, yeah, and that's how they're doing it there. That's how they here, do it there. Right, yeah, but here it will right. be different. Right. Mm -hmm. So will you, will you, are you planning on staying as the alternate Northbridge building inspector? I mean, I have been for years. I haven't been utilized. There's, okay. there's like three alternates there. So, I mean, if, if, unless it's an issue, I can just come off of that. No. That was, that was usually like, um, you know, hey, I'm going on vacation. I got an inspection on Monday. Can you take care of it for me? Correct. That's the yeah. same would be as. Yeah. Okay. Um, you said that you go to planning board meetings too. Yes. What role, you explain what you did with the ZBA. Can you explain your role with the planning board? So my, my role as a planning board um, basically helps um, with my expertise in zoning actually. So when they're formulating new zoning bylaws or they're looking to change zoning districts, um, it's my experience so far has been very beneficial not only for myself but for the planning board to give them feedback on okay, you're developing a new bylaw. Well, let me give you a little insight on how I can actually enforce that bylaw or what things might, because this, sometimes they'll, they'll say, this is what we want to pursue as a bylaw, and there's a conflict between another bylaw, and I, I can sometimes help regulate that. Um, so that's been helpful there, but usually I sit in the gallery in the back and I don't answer questions unless asked. Um, you know, I, I will attend them, especially if they have uh, new projects coming up. We have a couple of 55 and over communities coming in mm -hmm. um, in a few overlay districts that they wanted me to be part of, so I went to those meetings. Um, the planning board meetings, again, are not uh, like a mandatory. You have to be at every planning board meeting. It's as needed. Okay. So the form that you said that you had, um, yes. let's, you talked about a house. I, w I walk in I'm thinking about bringing a new business to the town of West Boylston. Mm -hmm. My first stop would be to go to you so I can get ready. If, if I'm listening and hearing what I think I'm hearing from you, you would help me get prepared to go to the planning board and the ZBA and, and tell me any other things I need to do 
so when I'm going to this meeting, I know what is expected of me, and that process can move along faster. Yeah, usually that's that's exactly it. Okay. I want I would like people to come in. You tell me what you would like to do, what you currently have for a situation, what you're looking to do, and then I I can give you right up front. You know, either you know you're going in the wrong direction. We, this isn't going to work for you because it's just prohibited in that area. Or if there's a way that you can get a special permit or a variance or something along that line. Uh, but usually I have people come in and meet with me first, tell me what you'd like to do, and let's see if we can make it work for you. If, if, it, you know, if it can't work, then at least you know that ahead of time, and maybe you can you know, think of something else that you might want to do. How does a potential new business know that? So usually come in and ask to sit with me on a, on a zoning meeting. Okay. You know, and I'll, I'll sit down with the individual, and you know, we can spend a half hour and go through the zoning bylaws and figure out if it's something that fits for them in their area where they want to do the business. Okay, so let's say um, something happens and there's no heat in this building one day. I don't know, Nancy or the town administrator calls you. Mm -hmm. What is the first thing that you would do to deal with that? So we'd come in and, and I'd want to take a look at the, the systems first and see if there's anything that's you know not functioning or um, I don't know if there's an analytical system here. I'd, I'd have to get into it and, and learn a little bit more about the systems here. Um, but the, first and foremost, you know, is it a blower issue where, you know, the, the fan motor is not working right now? Or is it a thermostat issue where the regulator is not working right now? Uh, dampers aren't opening or closing. It's things like that that you have to kind of work through. And then, again, setting up the right vendors in place to come out and service that, somebody that you can call on an emergency basis and say, listen, the heat in the municipal building is down. You know, can you come out here and do a diagnostic? This is where we think we're having the issue. Um, and for an example of that, in Berlin, we implemented that analytics system, and the HVAC equipment on that building is over 20 years old. So we were having an issue, actually, where the, bu the building air was cold. Um, and we went through it, and we were working with our vendors, and I logged into the computer system. And even though it was demanding heat, and the rooms were set to be at 70 degrees, the supply air was 65 degrees. So people are like, oh, the AC is blowing on me all day. Well, of course it is, because you're blowing 65 degree cold air, trying to get it to 70, it's just not gonna happen. So we had to change the temperature of the supply air to 110 degrees so that it would meet that need and drop the temperature. So when it hits 70, the system shut down. Because what happens is, and that's all through our energy committee process and becoming a green community is learning how these energy audits work and what works best for the systems. So in turn, we've been able to save money on our energy costs by taking these systems and, and making them function as efficient as possible at the age that they're at. Would you see yourself in this position trying to fix something on site, or is that when you'd look for, evaluate the issue and then get something? So it, it would be more of an evaluation, and, and if there's something simple, such as like with that analytics, I can jump onto the computer, change the setting, and then that's it, it's done. I can do that. If it's something where I got to take something apart and, and do a mechanical fix, I'm not going to get into that. I would have somebody, you know, I'd, I'd want to have a vendor on okay. to come and do that. You mentioned that you work with the DPW over in Berlin, I believe. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. So does that mean if a door is falling off the hinges, you call them and they go fix it? Or um, can you uh, give us an idea of what that connection is? Because yeah, we so, don't have that. So on occasion, if it's a, something small like that, you know, we're having a problem with the door handle or something, mm -hmm. the guys will come over and make an adjustment. Um, if it's filter replacement for the HVAC equipment, they'll come over and take care of that. Um, minor maintenance type stuff. Okay. Um, you know, their main focus is, is working on the roads and, you know, making sure that that stays working well that's their first priority okay thank you yep our, on, our only connection with i believe the buildings in the dpw are outside mm. yeah lawns you know things like that not sure. as of right now nothing inside the buildings yeah okay as a building commissioner are you in charge of the gas plumbing electric yeah. they all report to you yes so if, if there's an issue with one of them you'd handle it yes yeah on the department head Do they allow uh, adult use marijuana in Berlin? Yep, they just approved it. So we're going to be getting a We're familiar with that. Yeah. 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 As a matter of fact, uh, I was telling Nita just a little while ago, um, at one of my building official meetings, we toured a facility at 640 Lincoln Street. Um, that is a grow facility with processing, and then it's got retail 
for um, in dispensary for medical and recreational, as well as paraphernalia. And this facility is unbelievable the way it, it's set up and locked down. The security is crazy. But. Okay, any other questions from the board? Anita, is there anything that you have that we might have missed? Just one question. When it comes to the green communities, mm -hmm. um, have you been working with, with the town of Berlin to identify what projects might be eligible for competitive grant rounds? Yes. Yep. We're working on that right now. One of the uh, big initiatives that we were able to get through was our uh, street lighting. We just went through a big package with that and we're finalizing that right now. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, we've been working very close. Um, I'm also um, on some of that stuff too, like in the building department, <coughs> I'm implementing new uh, permitting software that will help, one, the software that we have right now is horrible, and the new software that we have coming in is um, made by Viewpoint, and um, they're fantastic, and we'll be up and running in probably about three weeks. Right now we just have to do the data transfer. Mm -hmm. But I, I try to look at modernizing and streamlining so that things run very efficiently and um, that I have a full background on, on everything so people get taken care of, customer service. Okay, and I, the director from the library is here with a few members of the board. Does the director have any questions in regards to, I'm, I'm assuming facility can step forward. Hi, I'm Anna Shaw, library director. Hi. Um, so I'm just here to hear about the um, facilities. As a matter of fact, we are. Um, right now, our library is 90 years old, and we unfortunately just had our septic system fail. So we're looking at um, fixing that first and foremost because they want to put an addition onto that building. Um, and the building also needs a new roof and some accessibility issues that need to be addressed. Um, so first and foremost, because nobody can be in the building if you can't utilize the septic system. So that's the first thing on our plate is to get that taken care of uh, sooner than later. I know they are working towards some grants, so I've been working with the library director on the grants that he wants to get to put the addition on and do some upgrades to the building um, and helping him facilitate some of that stuff. Um, I find it's, it's easiest when you're working on particular projects is to get the departments involved with their building, um, so, such as the library, police department, things like that. I want to find out what your needs are, what you, your future hopes are of the building, and then how can we address that in a timely and an appropriate manner without, you know, ballooning the budget. Yeah, and that's an issue. You have a long list of things that you need help trying to figure out what, what comes first. Sure. Okay. And definitely help you with that. Okay, from those questions, does anybody on the board have any other questions? Oh. No. The money is, is something we would negotiate. After. We would negotiate that. That's a different thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, one other question. Okay. If you were to be offered the job, um, how quickly would you be able to start here? I could start as soon as the 13th of November. And, um, Two week notice. Mm -hmm. And I, I would just ask, because Nancy kind of runs this building. Nancy, do you have any questions you'd ask that you'd want to ask this gentleman because of that part of it, you know, the facilities? Uh, I liked what I heard. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll um, just have him step back and then discuss if we need to, and then we can ask him other questions if they come up. Is that the best process? Or? Um, this is an open meeting, and, you know, you, you're, um, you have the ability to have discussion whether um, Joe is willing to step out and let the board have some candid discussion or he's because it's open he could technically sit and stay yeah. Whatever the board would rather Watch on TV afterwards anyway exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, you can just step back I guess right. if we have any questions sure. um, <laughs> Thank you, no way you In regards to what we just talked about does anybody have any discussion in regards to this or any thoughts that they want to bring forward? Well, I, was, I gotta say I'm very impressed um, Extremely well spoken, extremely knowledgeable, and um, I was impressed with every aspect. We, every question we asked him, he answered us, which is something that usually doesn't happen. So I, I was very impressed. 
To piggyback on what John's saying, not only did he answer them, I like the answers that I heard. Uh, they were the right answers. My only concern, as I said before, is how long can someone work 72 hours a week plus meetings until you burn out? Anybody else have anything to add? Yeah, I do. Okay, go ahead. I think, you know, Mike, he's, I'm, I'm also impressed by his qualifications as well as the experience. The only concern I have is I'm echoing uh, Mr. Crowley's concern. So, you know, this is a, you know, his work, if he comes as a full time here, no problem. But working in an another community full time and again 32, 40, 50 hours, so that, and also you need to run the family too. So, it's too much and too quick to, you might get burned out. That is, and also, you know, in this town, you know, morning seven, seven to nine, that's the, uh, you know, the uh, taxpayers, they do deserve a yeah, good timings or continuous timings for the building inspector in the, in town. Yes, I agree, now 1.30 to 7, you will be here. But the contractors will be gone after 3 o'clock, you know. So everything is done. So the only concern I have is the timing. All of the things are. So he, he said in his, in his hours, they yeah, use 7, yeah, early in the I morning. I totally agree, so. that's only two days. But it's only a couple of hours. So, uh, you know, is that enough? For the town, you know. Well, in, in inspection wise, I think it's plenty because you know, you do an inspection, it takes, I don't know, it takes you longer to get to the site than it does do the actual inspection in most cases. But the contractors, they do come in and they, they do their business in the morning. Right. right? But right. Once it's you get to know what days he's here, yeah. that's when the contractors come in. Like he said, if someone needs to pour a concrete foundation on Monday morning at 7 o'clock, he's going to be there at 6 o'clock no matter what. Him make ways to get there to do it. I mean, I I thought it was a you know I, every job is going to be on probation. I would assume anyhow. So I don't see what we have to lose by hiring them, by trying them. Myself, was my opinion. Well, also in regards to the hours, I mean, I'm sure that he could make arrangements if a if a builder says, you know, I'm nuts this week. I can only right. meet on Thursday. I mean, right. I'm sure he said he can be a little flexible, but. Again, I guess I'm concerned, the same concern. 72 hours a week is 14 hour days, over 14 hour days for five days a week. Six days, it's even over a 12 hour day to make and, uh, everything work. In addition to that uh, meetings. Addition to, I guess, I guess I'd meetings, say, you know. I guess I'd say addition to meetings and drive time yeah. um, from Berlin to here. You know, that's, it's still a little bit now of time, the, so. We have the, some other projects coming in. That the turns a 14, 14 hour week into 15 or 16 hour week mm -hmm. drive time. The one. So, do you have anything to do? Um, the friendly for Mr. Achu, I really like the details of the answers that you gave. Um, you sound like you've been doing this, and I know there's some concerns on the hours, but it sounds like you've got a really good handle on it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you ask for details, you don't get those details and the answers, and I really thought you stepped up to the plate. So I am highly impressed, and I really like that form that you were talking about, because if somebody's new coming into town, and whether it's business or a new building of you know personal housing or whatever, that form seems like it could help everybody, including our boards. Um, so I, I particularly like that, and I hope we're able to work something out. Thank you. I guess the only question I'd ask the board is what I just said about hours. 14 hour days with drive time and night meetings. That's one. I agree that everything I heard tonight was excellent. Excellent, yeah. But the only thing I'm concerned about is what does the board think about over 14 hour days and night meetings and on call for that, I, I guess that would be my only concern. Well, my concern, well, my only answer to that is, what do we have to lose by trying? 
Uh, now, what do we? Yeah, I don't know a temporary a temporary, temporary contract or how would we, how would we do that? Uh, I don't want. I don't want to give them a contract and then after six months say it's not working we, and then we have to move the process to fire him or to give him. So within any, any employment, whether it's an at-will or it's a contractual employment, um, we give a, a, typically we give a six-month probation. And so you evaluate the performance of that individual during the first six months. And if everything's looking good, then you continue on through the rest of the term of the contract. Or if within that six months you start to have concerns, you can terminate that employee really for no cause. You have the ability to say it's not working. Uh, thank you very much. We'll try something else. So that provision would stay whether we, you know, we're hiring um, a, an hourly employee or if we're hiring a contractual employee. So there's really no concern about, you know, our ability to terminate an employee if it's just not working out. We have that right whether it's um, hourly or contractual. I, I agree with John. I, I, I mean, it is a lot of hours. I, military people do it on a regular basis, I, so I know what it's like. Um, I, and I, I think we have nothing to lose by moving forward. And if Mr. H who feels that he can hold down that schedule, who am I to say, you know, I'm not going to give right. you a chance because I don't think you can. That's right. I totally agree, Mr. Crowley. Do you think? Uh, uh, the contract means, you know, do we have to sign one year, two year, three year? How, the, how many years of contract? How do you do? With past building inspectors, you've started with a one year contract. But you have the same, whether you do a one year contract or a three year contract, you still have that same provision six, six months of the probation. six months probation. May I say one thing? Sure. Um, just looking at this as a long-term thing, and I've had conversations with my family before I even put my resume forward. Um, I'm looking at this working in, in your community here uh, for the next five to 10 years. That's my time frame that I have in my head. That's what I've talked about with my family and we're all on board. So I just want you to, to understand that before you finalize your decision that I'm not into this so that like you think I'm out here in six months or whatever. I want a, a long-term commitment here. Go ahead. Peter. And just one, you know, reminder to the board that you do have the other applicant. We have um, our interim building inspector, George Tigner, is also interested in the position, and you know, you've re reviewed his um, performance. He's doing well as the interim, um, but he is limited in terms of the number of hours he can currently provide the town, and he does not have the ability to provide the facility maintenance. Um, oversight the way you were looking so while he's doing a, a good job that would be something that you would need to weigh in giving consideration to George Tigner for the position as compared to what you're hearing uh, from from Joe at you tonight I personally think we need to put both jobs facilities and the billing commissioner as one job so I would uh, I would ask the board allow a needed to enter into negotiation with the three shooters come to a contract I'll second it okay have we um in regards to have we looked into the possibility of the I know we've talked about it but have we looked into the possible of the DPW director helping out with the facility side I've spoken to our current DPW director and to be honest he's not interested in adding that to his duties it's outside of the scope of his job description no, well, the, way, the job description would need to be changed obviously Correct. so yeah, I mean, so has it been presented that way? I discussed it with way? him. He, was, he did not have strong interest in making that type of change. Uh -huh. Did you have anything else? No. I think, you know, I heard it differently. Uh, if he is compensated, he might be interested. Well, I mean, I don't know how we would expect to add a change his job description. So and the, not the thing is, you know, the thing is, he did, he has experience with period experience in mass DOT as a facilities manager. So that's one thing, you know, we could explore whether he is really interested. I think so my conversation with him is, you know, it, as a DPW director, he, he, he won't be doing it with along with the DPW director for free. But if he is, if the things changes and if he's compensated, yes. I mean, That's my understanding. As, as discussion on this motion, uh, I think that 
the building, whether or not the DPW director has the ability or wants to be the facilities manager, the jobs don't really marry together. The building inspector and the facilities manager are, you know, they're both inside for the most part, you know, or not for the most part, but they deal with buildings. The DPW director is mainly dealing with outside parks and, and highways. So the two jobs are not complementary, whereas a building inspector being the facilities manager, they're complementary positions. They fit, they mesh better together than a DPW director and a facilities manager. I totally agree with you at the same time. So we are, can, I know that, you know, there is shortage of building inspectors and we are looking for a building inspector with the facilities experience. So we are not finding anyone to come in as a full-time person to our town, so to provide a better service for our taxpayers. So, are we this desperate to a hire a, another full-time working as someone working in another full-time job with this many hours of additional hours for our town? So that's the only concern I have. If you are, if the if the DPW director works for you know until the on interim position or temporary, so we could find us you know another candidate. I don't think it's desperate at all. I think it's an opportunity for the town. I agree. I agree. We've got a good candidate. We've got a motion on the table. And it's open for discussion. Sure. So right. open right. That's how we do it. That's why I'm. Right. Yeah. That's why I'm. I'm. I'm giving my views. That's yeah. all. Yeah. So um, we have a motion to second. Um, we can vote. Uh, we can vote on that. And then I'll, all I would ask is that the. the because we still have to negotiate a contract with this gentleman and the pay and things like that. I would just ask the town administrator to talk to the building inspector, to the DPW director, in case in, in a week or whenever you talk to him that we're, we're not in the, in the right place with this contract, that we have something to fall back on. Because um, we already have somebody we can uh, talk to about the building department, this gentleman that can work so many hours. But right. yeah. So I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, so um, Anita, you will meet I with will be in touch with Joseph. Joe and we will work on the terms of a proposed contract which we can bring back to the board at the November 7th meeting. That would be in the executive session do we have? Would that be executive session? It, it doesn't need to be an executive session. I mean, at this point, there, you've had open discussion. Um, if it's pre-negotiated, I, I don't see that it would require executive session. It could be. Okay. So I think we have one set next Wednesday. For another for purpose, we could add it to it. And we also, for the board to know, we have to have a quick building meeting at 6 o'clock and an executive session at 6.15. And I have spoke to John about that, so if we can move that forward. Um, On Wednesday, the 7th, Chris? Correct. I think that uh, we should meet an executive session about this first for the, for the money-wise. Don't we have to I, do? I, that's what I was wondering. Maybe if, I guess if you come, if you come with a something you agree upon, we can talk about it in an open session. Why don't you? We we decide before next next week how the best process. With with anything, it, it's you go into executive session if it's determined to be in the best interest of the town. That if you feel it by having it be an open discussion, it would be detrimental to reaching a decision. So, you know, if everything goes well and you know terms are easily reached. It could go either way. But by scheduling it as an executive session, it provides you that ability in case things still need to be fine-tuned. So sch schedule it in, in regards to the yeah. motion that we make. Either way, the we're meeting, meeting at six, the meeting starts six at 6. 6 o'clock okay. for building, 6.30, we'll start executive, executive session. session. Okay. Um, nothing else? I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Well, no, oh, yeah, good. Second. Question. No, I'm just being an idiot. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. I need discussion. <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for coming in.